I'm in the locker room with my Washington University and St. Louis basketball teammates, blasting the only acceptable pump up song for 2011, Jason Derulo's Ride In Solo. <laughs> I'm a freshman point guard, trying to take it all in and doing my best not to mess up. The game that we're getting ready for is the one we've been waiting for our entire lives, a national championship game. As we ran out of the tunnel onto the court, I anticipated the usual adrenaline rush that accompanies the sound of a rising crowd. But the mild applause we received was a total buzzkill. Besides our families and a few loyal superfans, the stands were mostly empty. Our national championship game turned into something like a practice scrimmage with referees. I don't like showing pictures from that game because the empty stands in the background make me feel self-conscious. We lost that game, but I walked away with a deeper sadness. This is the reality for many women athletes today. They spend years in dedication to their craft, but their amazing abilities and accomplishments go underappreciated. What a serious missed opportunity. Every person, sports fan or not, can appreciate the beauty and promise of women's sports. You should watch women's sports. You won't be disappointed. Let's take a step back and think about how we got here. Three damaging myths surrounding women's sports deserve to be redressed and debunked. Women athletes aren't as talented as men. Women's sports are boring. And women's sports don't matter. Let's start with the first one. Women athletes aren't as talented as men. Under this rationale, if Elena Deladon can't dunk like LeBron James, it's not worth watching. If Allison Felix can't beat Justin Gatlin in a head-to-head 100-meter -head dash, it's not worth watching. While it is true that men have larger muscle mass that makes them stronger and longer arms and legs that make them faster, it's also true that there are other markers of athleticism. Being a good athlete is about skill finesse, IQ, determination, and sportsmanship, all of which women hold in just as large quantity as men. Let's take a look at some of the most talented women athletes I know. You've probably heard of Serena Williams, Simone Biles, and Megan Rapinoe. But I'd like to introduce you to three you might not have heard of. First, Gwen Jorgensen. She's the 2016 Olympic gold medalist in triathlon. She was an accountant at Ernst & Young and left her job to become a full-time professional triathlete. She's now looking to become the first American woman to win gold in the marathon since 1984. Claressa Shields, two-time Olympic gold medalist in women's boxing. Claressa has a really inspiring story. She grew up in Flint, Michigan in a childhood that was marked by poverty, abuse, and a speech impediment. And finally, Kate Courtney top American mountain biker. She went here to Stanford. Kate loves sharks and Shark Week. In fact, on her bike, where it says her name, she's changed the A in Kate to resemble a shark fin because she says that's what her riding style is like. She lurks beneath the surface and then she pounces right when the time is right. Stories like these of talented women with fun and inspiring backgrounds abound in women's sports. We just don't hear about them. Only 4% of sports media coverage goes to women's sports. So it's not that women athletes aren't talented, it's that we don't have enough exposure to be able to assess talent accurately. Second, women's sports are boring. I'll turn that on its head and ask, what even is boredom? Because if you're bored watching some of these events, it's not a problem with the athletes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about one of my favorite women's sporting events from recent history, the 2018 Olympic final in cross-country skiing. The American skier Jessie Diggins rounded the curve to come down the home stretch. She was a few lengths behind and she put on one of the most powerful performances I've ever seen to cross the finish line and win Olympic gold in this photographic finish. 
Or how about Neka Agumake, Stanford grad, who hit this game-winning shot as she fell to her back to win the WNBA championship for the Los Angeles Sparks? So you're going to tell me that watching NASCAR cars go around <laughs> in circles <laughs> 200 times in a row is more exciting than this? <laughs> or that ESPN should put professional cornhole on instead of professional women's soccer? The excitement around women's sports is there. It's up to us to pay attention. Women's sports don't matter. The World Series, and Super Bowl captivate men's sports fans for weeks at a time. Because women's sports doesn't have the infrastructure or the media coverage, it can be difficult to know when the big games and competitions are happening. But that doesn't mean that women's sports don't matter. Girls and women who play sports have higher levels of self-confidence, higher motivation to achieve long-term goals, and lower levels of obesity, diabetes, and certain cancers. Playing sports can translate into off-field success as well. Research from Ernst & Young and ESPN shows that of senior le level businesswomen in America, 94% have a background in sport, and 52% of them competed at the collegiate level. So if you care about the future of our country and want to see a more equitable world, you'll know women's sports matter. Professional women athletes are also some of the most amazing advocates out there. You might have heard of the US soccer team's fight for equal pay. But did you know that the US hockey team went through a similar battle in 2017? When Colin Kaepernick knelt to protest systemic racism in our country, US soccer star Megan Rapino was the first to kneel in solidarity. And arguably the best basketball player in the world, Maya Moore, has taken two years away from the game to advocate for prison reform, specifically for a man she believes is wrongly convicted and sits on death row in Missouri. Once you know these women and their stories, it's hard not to care. The same way that we draft and follow our fantasy football leagues or latch on to contestants in The Bachelor, that's what I want for women's sports. Which brings me to what you can do to better support. At Stanford, it could mean watching one or two events live. We have some of the most amazing athletes in the world right here on our campus. In the last year, our women's soccer, volleyball, swimming and diving, rowing, water polo, and tennis teams have all won national championships. That's six in the last year. When you're in a bar or restaurant, ask the server to turn this, one of the TVs to a women's sporting event. Even if you're only casually watching the game, other patrons will stroll in and see that it's on TV and it'll start to become more normalized. I can't understate the importance of sports, of stories in women's sports. Invest in learning about a player or a team and follow them for a season. Maybe it's someone who's from your hometown or home state or someone who speaks out about a cause you care about. Once you're invested in their success, I think you'll find it's hard not to pay attention. Another thing you can do is consider being a coach for a local youth girls team. Being a constant presence in a young girl's life can make a world of difference. And finally, as business school students, I would be remiss not to plant the seed that maybe one day you should buy a women's sports team. <laughs> <laughs> and grow it into the most successful sports franchise in the history of the world. <laughs> I still have a recurring dream. It happens about once a month or so. I'm back in college, this time as a senior. I'm in that locker room getting ready for another national championship game. But this time, when I run out onto the court, I'm met with a wall of applause that sends me back on my heels. I want this to be more than a dream. I want it to be the reality for the next generation of female athletes. Thank you. Thank you.